This is your 20-minute podcast, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. You're listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower. I want to welcome my guest, Mike Vini, America's leading mental health speaker and high-energy corporate drumming event facilitator. Well, first of all, welcome, Mike. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me on your show, and hello to your listeners. So I got to ask you first, before we get into the mental health stuff, tell me about the corporate drumming. Sure. Uh, I do drumming with adults in corporate America as a form of leadership development and team building. And one of the reasons that I do it is because adults have trouble working well together. And it's important for people to learn some better skills about playing well in the sandbox. And my services with the drumming give people some new ideas and tools on how to work better as a team. How cool. I mean, yeah. Egos can get in the way and it's tough to uh, get those balance, the balance working out. No, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because I do both that and, and speaking about mental health. And I'm a big believer in this idea that mental health issues and people issues go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And that being said, by working on this side of the coin, I allow people to possibly also work out certain mental health issues that are happening at work, too. Nice. So tell me about the, the mental health thing. How did you get into that? What was the epiphany or the life experience? Sure. Well, I actually had a breakdown in 2011, and that actually started my speaking career. But my mental health history has been going on since the beginning of my life. Uh, Just to sum it up for you in this short 20-minute podcast, as a child, I had a lot of behavior problems, a really, really hard time uh, behaving myself. And that led to me getting expelled from three schools, hospitalized in a psychiatric hospital three times for extended periods of time. I was on a first name basis with everyone in the hospital emergency room because I was always in crisis. I used to harm myself. I tried to take my own life at age 10 and I was just acting out violently at home. And and I realized that, you know, this was tough. Life was tough for me. And the thing that actually turned my life around, the the medication that worked was drumming. That was the thing that made me feel better. And so- I became a drummer because not not because I think it's cool. I mean, it is cool. Don't get me wrong. To be a well, drummer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me set the record straight. I mean, girls but, love the drummer. Come on, girls love <laughs> the drummer. And but one of the reasons I decided to do it is because it was my medication. The only thing that makes me feel better still does. And I'm 37 years old, and I'm not on any mental health medications, pharmaceutical. I just do my drumming, run my business, uh, exercise, and have good friends in my life. And I realized that, you know, self-care was really important. And there are a lot of people like me who are struggling with the same issues or families that are struggling with the same issues. And that's why I speak about it. Outstanding, man. My gosh, what an experience uh, to get you where you are and have the opportunity to really uh, pay it forward to people who may not even have an idea that there's a crisis in their home. Absolutely. And it's an issue that people don't want to talk about. You know, it's the uncomfortable subject and i'm trying to make it a normal conversation good for you good for you and it's become more and more i guess in the news really when you have like the sandy hook elementary shooting and you have some other things like that where you know a young guy shot some people in a college in washington and roseburg oregon and different things like that and and they oftentimes bring up well there were mental health issues and nobody caught it and Mm. but they don't seem to they don't seem to at least talk about some kind of way to address that for other people. Well, this is a great subject you brought up that we can spend so much more than 20 minutes on. Right. But one, one of the things I want to say to that is there are different sides of that whole issue. And I'm just coming from one particular side. And one thing I always say to people is that yes, mental health issues can contribute to anything in life. But at the end of the day, someone can just choose to make an evil decision, regardless of whether or not they have mental health issues. And most people with mental health issues statistically are proven to be safer than everyone else. You know, we're, we're, we are more likely to have a, a violent crime committed against us than us doing something. And that's an actual statistic. That being said, 
when things like this happen, it becomes so overwhelmingly emotional and we get so angry and sad hearing about it that we need to come to an answer. We, we, we as humans like answers to things. Absolutely. And why would, why would someone do this? And one of the first things people just go to is mental health. So people with mental health issues are violent. And that's, that's really not true. That being said, it's really about the decision just to cause harm. It's really, really about that decision to cause harm. And one thing I always tell people is that if you allow people with mental health issues to be categorized as that, then you basically disempower us because there are many CEOs and companies, successful companies that are struggling with the same issues as those shooters, yeah. you know? Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, it's, it's just about the decision to do harm. And we have to have, for whatever reason, it seems we have to label everything. Yes, because human beings don't like to be confused. Right. We don't like we don't like things that are vague. We don't like things we don't understand. And if we can't put it into a category, it, it stresses us out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to put it into the mental health box, and then okay, I'm good now. I can move on and have lunch. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What about and of course, mental health is there's a connection to that to suicide as well, right? Absolutely. Uh, depression has been linked to suicide. And there's so many things actually linked to suicide. Sometimes when someone attempts or follows through with it, uh, you don't even see that there was ever a problem. But the reality is we all struggle with internal pain sometimes that we don't understand. And I like to operate with the point of view that we all struggle with mental illness at some level, every single one of us. And if we treat others, assuming that they might be going through something, even if they look happy and fine and are doing well in life, we'll find better ways to connect with each other and prevent suicide. Well, I couldn't agree more with you. I had a circumstance personally in November of 2012, and uh, we never have guns in our house, but our, our son uh, was home from Afghanistan and he left his pistol on a table in the, in the uh, dining room. And I have my own home studio here. I do voiceover work and stuff. And I was just having a, I, don't, I can't even tell you. I was just having a, a thing and um, was unbelievably depressed and, and walked out and, and saw that gun. And for about two minutes, I was ready to go. And then um, fortunately, it was unloaded. And fortunately, I caught myself and, and asked the question, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. You know, and then I got some counseling and some medication and some whatever. And, but I couldn't agree more because that really opened up my thought process to be more aware of potential issues with my family, my friends, even strangers that I just run into. You know, I'm just much more conscientious about being observant, I guess. Yeah. And by, by the way, David, thank you so much for being transparent and sharing that because. You are not alone, and I think that's something that happens to people regularly where we think a thought like that, you know, and the, the problem happens when we act on those thoughts. Yeah. But we all think them, you know, it's, it's not just a select group of people that thinks that sometimes. No, it's all of us at times. And it's, I, I want to say it's a human thing to think that. We've all had overwhelm. We've all been done with it. And that's why it's just really important, again, like you just said, to connect with people and be empathetic to their situation, whether they look a certain way or not. And one of the things too, I think is you become who you surround yourself with. And so, uh, and that's a general statement, but I believe it to a certain level of, of if you surround yourself with positive influences, loving influences, those kinds of things, that's going to help you and your mental health and all kinds of things in your life. And then conversely, if you like the Columbine shooting here in, in Denver uh, 12 years ago, probably, you know, these guys surrounded themselves with like-minded people and there wasn't anything wrong perceivably with them. They did what you said earlier as far as they just, it's time to go do something evil. Yeah, that's the thing. It's time to go do something evil. But I think it's important, you know, it, what you just said, I, I love the idea of being intentional about who you surround yourself with. Now, that's a little hard if any of your listeners is listening and thinking, well, what about my family? You know, that's a, <laughs> right, that's, right. A, that's a whole other podcast. That's a few episodes right there. I know, but, right? <laughs> well, there's my mother-in-law. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I think for, for most of us, there are people in our life that we can choose to spend time with, 
Yeah. And I'm also a big believer if there are family members that we are, you know, stuck seeing that that are toxic for us. There is a way to say I love you to somebody and love them from far away and put up a thing called boundaries, which people are just not very good at. And I have actually found that the more I surround myself with good energy and good people, for some strange reason, David, my mental health has been a lot better. Couldn't agree more, man. Could not agree more. My experience is exactly the same. And and in fact, if a few years ago, I lived in Northern California and I had these five best friends of mine and they they were just, I can't even tell you how important were, they were to me. I was coming out of a divorce and the energy that they brought me, the ability to feel good about myself again and all that kind of stuff. Just a unique group of people that I'm still in contact with, three of them, because two of them have passed on. But when I came to Colorado and met my wife, I told her, I said, the reason I was attracted to you was because the best thing of every one of those five friends are all in you. Oh, love it. And so that that put me in such a safe place that I'd never felt before. That is amazing. That is amazing. And, oh, see, now I want to start asking you questions about this. About it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my interview. Um, it's all nice. good, man. Yeah, but I, I think I think it's it's very important, you know, and, and one of the things I remind people is that, um, you know, it's funny, we tell it to kids, you know, watch who your friends are, watch who you spend your time with. We tell this to kids all the time, right. but adults need to focus on this even more. And the other thing that I really suggest that people have in their lives, and this is unique to every situation, is heroes, adults especially. We tell kids to have heroes, but we forget that adults need them just as much, if not more. Well said. And I think that's really important whether it's heroes spiritually, heroes that are your friends and neighbors, it doesn't matter. Looking for heroes to look up to and model your behavior after. Boy, that is, wow. I got goosebumps on that one. That is totally spot on in my life. Uh, and obviously it is in yours too. Yeah, no, absolutely. I uh, had a realization um, a few years ago. I've been doing a lot of work around um, mental health and, and, and masculinity being a man and you want to talk about a taboo subject. I mean, right, mental health right. is one thing, but you bring it up with men. That's like the no, no. But one of the things that I, I realized was that when I was looking up online on Google, looking up like male, male role models, like who, who's a healthy male role model. I really, I couldn't find many things. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, there were, there were, there were different forums discussing it, but I put something in similar for women and the plenty of things came up. Right. You know, and, and, and I realized, you know, for even for men, you know, what, what is an example of a healthy male role model? And I think that definition is unique to everyone. And even for women, they might not have certain, you know, women role models as, right. as the women who are listening to this might, might think. But I think it's important for all of us to be intentional about discovering what is a role model for us? Who do we want to be like? And redefining that as you go, because if you... I mean, if you tap into a, who you believe to be a role model today and you pick up some of their energy, that may very well lead you to another role model, to another role model, to another role model, right? Agreed. Absolutely. I've been, um, say in my business, something you'll appreciate is I look at other businesses that I want to be like, and I have taken the time in my life to model myself after those business being intentional. And I actually, I don't ever tell anybody who, who it is, um, right, right, but, I, right. but, but I, but I pick three different businesses each year to model myself and they might be businesses that are totally different than mine, but it's a great exercise in looking at someone else's behavior and how they interact and trying to bring that into my world. Oh man, absolutely. There was a guy I interviewed for a podcast in Atlanta, a real estate guy. And he came off so authentic and so genuine and so pay it forward uh, kind of thing where he just, you know what, if you want to, if you want to text me or email me or call me and ask questions, it was just so refreshing to hear his, his business model. And I'm going, I got to think about that. What can I creatively borrow from that to help my business? You know? Yeah. Authenticity is a big thing. And, and for those of you that are listening that are in the workplace, or have your own businesses. There's a wonderful book I just started reading. It's called 2017 Trends. And it's about noticing trends that are going on in the world, in our culture. And everything from um, you know feminism, the rise of that, to other things. And one of the things that it talked about is the importance of authenticity. And, and not even just authenticity, but just, just showing your sloppy side, even in a 
YouTube video. It doesn't have to be fully polished, but just showing the real human side of yourself. And for so many of us, we spend time, money, and effort <laughs> trying to look polished, trying right. to appear a certain way. Right. And it's just really funny how there's a trend in our culture that's moving towards authenticity, which I think is a wonderful thing. Absolutely right. When I, uh, when I first started dating uh, Karen, my wife, I had come from Colorado, from Northern, Northern uh, California, where I managed a group of radio stations and I was on the air and whatever. And so her oldest daughter stopped her one day and she says, what is that guy about? You know, because I had my radio persona on instead of being authentic, and I hadn't even thought about it because I had mm-hmm. been in that other place for so long. And so we had some wonderful conversations about that. And over time, I gradually learned to be as authentic as I know how to be on any given day and throw integrity in there as well. And uh, I'm really a totally different person than I was 15 years ago. Yeah, and it's something that, um, you know, the more, go back to what we initially started talking about, mental health. Yeah. So a lot of times when it comes to mental health, learning about yourself, becoming more aware of yourself is really the key strategy for any of us to improve our mental health. Whether you're struggling with just a little bit of stress or you know severe depression, doesn't matter. Self-awareness is a good thing. And I'm learning that the more self-aware that I become, the more I can just be myself. Yeah. The more I can even just know who that is and celebrate it. So I think it's a, a very important thing. So speaking of that, do you... Do you help individuals work through that, or do you do you stay on the the speaking tour, or how does your how does your business model work? My business model is still evolving. Actually, it's something that's that's uh, always evolving that I'm learning about. And by the way, I always tell people start a business if you really want to learn about yourself. Right. <laughs> um, great, great, True story. Great yeah. Great, great mirror. Uh, what I mainly do is I am a speaker, so I travel around to schools conferences around the country and corporate events. And I speak about mental health. And one of my roles is to teach people from the perspective of someone who struggles with it, who's also living a very successful life. You know, I'm pretty fortunate. I have wonderful family, friends, a business. Life's going pretty good. If you look at it on paper, it's going good. I got good health and and I got social plans several times a week at night in New York City. Life is pretty good. And that being said, you know, at the same time, I struggle with some of the most painful issues that people with mental health issues have. And I've been able to learn some skills on how I think about myself and how to cope. And so what I do is share these tools in simple, easy to understand language with people and try to inspire them to take action in their own lives. Fabulous. What a gift, man. Paying it forward in, in spades. If uh, people go to your website, transformingstigma.com, uh, what will they find there? Well, num- number one, they'll see probably a picture or a video of me, so they know <laughs> it's me. And uh, number two, I think one of the most important parts of my site that I've been trying to continuously work on is the blog, where I try to write articles that are for people who are struggling and even mental health professionals with just some different resources that they can use. There's also a resources page. So if you are listening to this show, and thank you for listening if you are, and you are struggling or you know someone who is, There's a resources page that can point you to different organizations and hotlines that you can reach out to in your area. Outstanding. Mike Beanie, it's been a blast, man. And that was the quickest 20 minutes I've been in in a while. (laughs) Cool. Well, it's been fun. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Hey, you're very welcome. You've been listening to your 20 minute podcast with David Brower and our special guest, Mike Beanie. And be sure to visit his website. And that is transformingstigma.com. Mike, have a great week. Thanks again. Until next time, don't forget to download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20 minute podcast. That's audibletrial.com forward slash your 20 minute podcast for your free audiobook. And thanks for listening to your 20 minute podcast with David Brower.